It's a Wednesday. It's the fifth day of October 2022. The Stay Weather Podcast brought to you by Cowboy State Daily, Wyoming's news authority. Check them out at CowboyStateDaily.com or on their Facebook page. It's going to be a pretty decent stretch of weather for most of you between now and through the weekend. For you folks in the Southern Rockies, the Four Corners area, Arizona, New Mexico, you've got a storm that's stuck down there. And that's going to continue to cause unsettled weather. Sorry for you folks down at Balloon Fiesta in Albuquerque. Just miserable weather for the 50th anniversary of Balloon Fiesta. But for the rest of the Intermountain West, other than this cold front sideswiping the eastern areas late tomorrow and Friday, producing some showers and cooler weather, it's going to lead into a really nice weekend in the central and northern areas. Just a classic October stretch of weather, blue sky, cool nights, cool days, but very comfortable temperatures and conditions. It's the battle of the models. We talked about this yesterday. We can tell you we're getting more confident that changes are afoot for the middle of next week for the entire West. The trick is sorting out the modeling, but also sorting out the pattern. And we'll talk about that as we get to the second half of this podcast. More great photos coming on in. Shane Smith, thanks for this beautiful shot near Gunnison of the changing fall colors there. And uh, Jackson County, complete with a couple of deer. Nice shot there uh, near Cowdery. And then in Cheyenne, some just beautiful trees uh, beginning to show their colors uh, in town. And we're seeing that now across the lower elevations as well. As we take a look at the current satellite imagery, the two swirl of clouds we saw yesterday are still there. This low is actually retrograding to the west-southwest while this guy is going this way. And here's our high pressure and the orange there showing the drier air that's going to slip in as we head into the weekend. There's a bit of a cold front up here. We'll show you that in a minute. That's going to sneak into some areas. So we have the low up here, the low here. Here's your cold front. Here's the low stuck in New Mexico and Arizona. This low right here is going to be a big player. We'll talk about that in a minute. It's not this low that's coming in next week, but this low could be responsible for the big high that drives the weather. We'll talk about that here in a minute. By Friday morning, here's the high along the West Coast, the low stuck down here and across the Great Lakes and Midwest. It'll be cool and unsettled. And here's our frontal boundary right here that'll be pushing in late Thursday night and Friday. And it is going to produce some showers. It's going to produce some shower activity in an area right here late tomorrow into Friday morning and bring in some cooler temperatures. This is by Saturday. The low still down here, the high here, but notice this low is now still there, but there's separation now. It's getting cut off from the main jet stream. This is the area of low pressure that we're going to be looking at as a big player next week. See that blue up there? There's some really cold air beginning to form up there that that system could tap into. So a pretty innocuous looking pattern. Northwest flow aloft keeps temperatures a little on the cool side, but actually very, very comfortable. This is into Saturday, Sunday, and into early Monday. And this is what the precipitation through Saturday afternoon looks like. You can see all the rain down here with that upper level low. This rain right here. This is associated with the backdoor cold front tomorrow night and into Friday. But look at west of the divide. There's just very, very little going on. So here we go. It's the battle of the weather models. Although you're going to notice they're not battling as much now, which does lead to some confidence that we do have these changes coming. So I'm going to go through and show you the three model suites again, the European, the Canadian, and the American model or the GFS. So this is for Monday evening, 6 p.m. Mountain Time. See this low here we talked about? Notice it's building up this ridge. The winds aloft pumping warm air ahead of that low, building that high. As this high builds and grows, it sends the low that was up here in Alaska southeast into British Columbia. So what'll happen is, is that if this takes place, this high drives this low south as this high builds to the north. So this is the European 6 p.m. Monday. This is the Canadian, 6 p.m. Monday. And this is the GFS, 6 p.m. Monday. Notice they're in pretty good agreement. All three of them are advertising much colder weather coming into Western Canada and the Pacific Northwest. 
by Monday and Tuesday. This is where the weather pattern though gets a little more squirrely. And this is where we gotta figure out whether or not the models are correct or not. Because once we get beyond that, let's go out to Wednesday morning. The European model, what it does is there's some separation between the main jet stream up here and the storm. It's wanting to break off and then meander over Eastern Oregon and the Northern Great Basin. It will send colder air in though behind it. Colder air will get released from, the, from Western Canada. This is the Canadian. It's wanting to hold it more together and bring a really strong cold front. There, there will be a lot of cold air with the Canadian if this happens. Notice the GFS or the American model is kind of a middle ground between the Canadian and the European model with it driving cold air in, but then bringing this low in the counterclockwise spin around it. What could happen? There's two scenarios. What will likely happen is either this will hold together in one piece like the Canadian is showing and be a strong cold front bringing a big drop in temperature, freezing conditions and mountain snow and maybe snow on the plains. It either will hold together like this as one system or it will break apart and be actually two systems. The low in the Great Basin and the cold front bringing in the much colder air behind it. Now both solutions are colder and wet. The first solution is the coldest. The second solution could be the most wet because if this breaks off like this and meanders very slowly into the central and northern Rockies, we may see a slow moving storm system that brings colder wet weather to the central and northern Rockies by the middle to the end of next week. So either scenario makes it colder. Either scenario brings cold and wet, but one scenario is a lot colder than the other. So both scenarios are plausible the, the scenario of the whole system coming through in one piece or the system coming through in two pieces. So stay tuned because it does make a big difference. This is the European model temperature anomaly for Thursday morning. Notice the cold is along the west coast into the northern Rockies, but temperatures here relative to average really aren't that cold. But the Canadian, when it brings it in in one piece, see how much colder it is? It doesn't separate the storm. So it keeps the cold air in one piece. And the GFS or the American models, again, that compromise to where it's cold, although not as extensive as the cold with the Canadian. See how sharp this boundary is? The air, the air mass is pretty darn cold with this system. So changes are coming next week. Have yourself a good Wednesday. We'll see you tomorrow.